Okay, so our next speaker is here representing the year 2018. And she taught herself how to keep bees and raise chickens. Do you see what happens when you move out of New York City? <laughs> I swear to God, she left New York, moved to Cleveland, and now she raises chickens. Everyone, please welcome Emily. All right, I'm happy to be back here after many years away. I was last speaking here in the days of the tie-dye logo t-shirts, so it's been a while, and hopefully it's been long enough that I can talk to you about survival analysis again, which is what I talked to you about last time. Totally different topic today, though. So um, happy to be here. I'm a cancer biostatistician at Cleveland Clinic, so I will be talking to you today about some statistics, nothing too detailed, and some R stuff related to reporting those statistics. So I'm going to be talking about um, a specific type of endpoint, time to event endpoints. And these are really common in biomedical research, and it's the most common type of endpoint that I work with in cancer research. And these are endpoints where they have a distinct start time and a distinct end time. The start time can be something like diagnosis date, surgery date, treatment start date, and the end time can be something like the date of death, a date of progression, or a date of recurrence. And these are common examples from cancer research. And some common research questions that relate to these types of endpoints have to do with times and probabilities, such as what is the probability of remaining event-free for a certain number of years, or what is the average amount of event-free time? And this is in a population of patients where subjects where some have had the event and some haven't. So this can be seem straightforward. It seems like it could be a binary endpoint, but the problem arises where we need sp specialized statistical techniques when patients are followed for varying amounts of time. So in this plot, we just see that we have some patients who had an event. Those are the ones with the yellow triangles, some patients who have not yet had the event with the green circles. And you can see that each of these subjects is followed for a different amount of time, some shorter, some longer. And so this is why specialized survival analysis methods are needed to take into account this variable follow-up time. So the anyone who's ever worked with this type of endpoint is familiar with the survival package. It's the basis of the survival ecosystem in R. Um, it began development in 1985. It was part of S and moved over to R. It has a total of 11.9 million downloads to date, and there's still active development ongoing. There are many detailed vignettes in this package covering both the basics and advanced topics, and it includes all of the essential methods that you would need to do a survival analysis. So this is really the go-to place for time-to-event analyses. And many other packages have been developed um, extending this and following up on it as well. So I'm going to be going through some examples today using a data set that is included in the survival package, the colon data, which come from a clinical trial of adjuvant therapy for colon cancer. And so I'm only going to focus on a few variables today. One is the treatment assignment, which could be one of three groups, an observation or placebo group, the levamisole group, and then levamisole plus 5-FU. So these are two different types of adjuvant chemotherapies being compared to a placebo group. Um, we'll look at sex, male or female, years to status, which is the continuous, this is the time to event endpoint, so it's the number of years each patient was followed. And then there's an indicator variable called status for whether the patient experienced a recurrence, a disease recurrence, or were censored. So at the end of follow-up, censored means at the end of follow-up, they had not yet experienced a disease recurrence. And I actually altered these data a little bit, and I have a slide at the very end of my presentation for your reference, just showing the changes I made to the data set to use it for this presentation. So one of the main things we might want to do is we, want, we, we might want to know, you know, what's the average amount of time that someone remains recurrence-free after each of these treatments or in this population? And we estimate that using the median event-free time. And we can get this from the survival package using the following code. Um, the serve fit function from survival gives us the results here. On the left-hand side of our formula, we have a serve object where we put in our years and our status. And in this case, I'm just looking at it in the overall population. So I have a one on the right side of my equation. And we find out that our um, population has 929 patients. There were 468 events. And our median event-free time was 5.52 years. And there's a 95% confidence interval. We might also want to know the X-year event-free probability. So in this case, let's say I'm interested in the five-year recurrence-free probability. So what's the probability of being recurrence-free for five years in this population? And so we just call server summary on our surfit object, and we get the results for that, and we find out that 0 0.508 is the um, five-year recurrence-free survival probability in this case, with a 95% confidence interval for that as well. 
Then we might also be interested in fitting a regression model where we want to look at a covariate associated with our time to event outcome. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of different types of regression models that you can use in the um, case of survival analysis. I'm just going to focus on one, the Cox regression model. It's a very common model that people use. And we can use the Cox pH function to fit both univariate and multivariable Cox regression models by using Cox pH with our same formula, serve object on the left-hand side, and now I'm going to put the treatment variable on the right-hand side. And what we get back is a table of regression coefficients. There's only two levels of the treatment variable in this table because our placebo group is the reference. And what we're interested in here is the column of the exponentiated regression coefficients, which are hazard ratios. And if you aren't familiar with hazard ratios, they're somewhat similar to odds ratios, where a hazard ratio greater than one indicates an increased hazard of the event of interest recurrence, and a hazard ratio less than one represents a decreased hazard of the event of interest, in this case, recurrence. So for example, we see here that our levamisole plus 5-FU group has a decreased hazard of 0.59924 of a recurrence compared to the placebo group. And the last thing that we might be interested in in the case of survival analysis is looking at a Kaplan-Meier plot. So what a Kaplan-Meier plot is, is it's a plot of the probability of being free of the event on the y-axis by the time on the x-axis. So in this case, we have the years from treatment start across our x-axis and the probability of being recurrence-free on the y-axis. The plot always starts up at 1, because at the beginning of follow-up, everyone is event-free. And then it's a step function down. So every time an event occurs, the, the plot steps down. And, it, and here we have a confidence interval as well. OK, so we're done. That's our analysis. We've done everything we need. We use the survival package. We have all of our results. And we don't need to do anything else, right? So it's great. We can do everything we need with the survival package. But what if we want to put our results into a reproducible, publication-ready report? So in my line of work, there's really two main things that I need to do. One is I need to get the right results. And two is I need to make those results reproducible and um, available to investigators to put directly into a peer-reviewed publication manuscript so that nobody's touching these numbers. I don't want them touching the numbers. I don't want to be touching the numbers. I want these tables to be coming out of um, a report and going straight into a paper, and the plots as well, to cut down on errors. So we can combine some packages, and we can be happy. We're going to use the survival package with the GT summary package, with the GG serve fit package to create our happiness. And these packages work really nicely together to give us everything that we need for a reproducible report on our survival analysis results. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with the GT summary package, if you work at all in biomedical research or anything with patient or clinical data, it's an essential package for your needs to create summary tables of both descriptive stat statistics and regression model results. And um, we're going to be focusing on three main functions today. It has built-in stuff to work with survival analysis. The first is the table surfit function, which we'll use to create tables of median event-free time and tables of X time event-free probability. The second function we'll look at is the table UV regression function to create tables of univariate Cox regression results. And then also the table regression function to create tables of multivariable Cox regression results. And those last two functions I mentioned, they work with many, many types of regression models. So if you're working with regression models at all and want to get out easy to use tables that look really nice from the start, these are great functions for you. And I've linked to the help pages here to see some detailed vignettes and get started with this package. OK, so let's see what we end up with here. To get our new table of median event-free time, we're going to use table serve fit with the probs equals 0.5 argument. Um, I don't think I have a little pointer, but you can see it down there. Uh, we have a few things here. Ba basically, we pass a list of our serve fit objects into table serve fit, use probs equals 0.5, and we get out this table on the right, which is um, an already ready-to-use, publication-ready table of our median event-free time. So now you see that I've passed in a list. Um, one of my serve fit objects is overall in the whole population, and then I also looked at one by treatment group. So we get both in the table. So you can see the same 5.5. 0.5 median recurrence free time for the overall population, and then also according to the treatment group here. And these functions are highly customizable, and you can set the labels, titles, subtitles, footnotes, and more. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is create a table of our x-year event-free probability. In this case, it's the five-year recurrence-free probability. Again, using the table serve fit function, but now instead of probs equals 0.5, I'm going to use times equals 5. So I pass the same list of serve fit objects into my table serve fit function, and I get back the table on the right, where now I have the five-year recurrence-free probabilities for both the overall population and the, um, according to the treatment group. So we see the same 51%. Uh, five-year recurrence-free probability in the overall population. And just a couple of notes here that um, for both the probs and the times argument here, you could, list, you could pass a vector, so you can, it doesn't have to be the median, it doesn't have to be five years, you can put multiple numbers in there and you would get them all into your table. And also note that you can use glue syntax in the labeling. You can see at the bottom here, I've used um, the t a time variable to have that also be reproducible into the column label of my table. So to cut down on um, additional uh, copy-paste errors and, and typos, you can have that be um, reproducible from your table and automatically coded. You can also do inline results reporting from table serve fit. So if you're writing up your report and you want to have some text describing the results, but you don't want to hard code the numbers in your text, I know one thing that I deal with constantly is, you know, one patient's data change, the investigator sends me back a new data set, I have to rerun all the results, so I want everything to be as reproducible as possible, so that all I have to do, I'm like, okay, I'll get your results back to you in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll work on this and I'll get back to you, and then I just, you know, read in the new data set and click the button and the report is done. So don't, don't tell them that, though. Uh, <laughs> so if we write the inline code on the top line here, the median 95% CI recurrence-free time for the levamisole treatment group with some R code in our text, we use the inline text function from the GT summary package to reference a table object where we've, we have to save our table to a table object. Um, to an object so that we can reference it here. We say which variable we're interested in, which level of the variable, and what um, probability we want in this case, and we get back the following text where it just shows that our median and 95% recurrence-free time for the levamisol treatment group is 3.2 years. And you can use the same thing for the X-year survival probabilities just by changing the table that you use as your object in the inline text. Now we're going to look at a table of univariate Cox regression results using the table UV regression function. So we pass our data set into the table UV regression. We say our method is Cox pH. Um, our Y, which is our outcome variable, is this serve object with the time and the status variable inside. And then we can list the variables that we want to include. So these will each each of the variables in the include statement will have a separate Cox regression model run for it. So this is incredibly helpful if you ever want to fit many, many, many univariable regression models and have all the results shown in a single table. You can list as many variables as you want here, or you can also not use the include statement, in which case every variable in your data set would be, have a regression model fit for it. And then we just have to say that we want to exponentiate those results to get the hazard ratios in our table. And in this case, I'm going to um, pass the result of that into an add global p function to get overall p values for my variables instead of level specific ones. And there are many other options that you can use for this as well. And we see we get back this table on the right where I have I have included two variables here, so two different univariate regression models were fit, one for treatment group and one for sex, and we have our hazard ratios with 95% confidence intervals and p-values in our table. And you can see the table also includes the footnotes automatically to show what the you know, HR stands for, what CI stands for, so these tables are ready to put into a publication without really needing any alterations. And you can customize those footnotes as you want. All right, then we might also want to fit a multivariable model where we're adjusting for multiple variables in a single model. In, we, in this case, we actually fit the model outside of the function, so we fit our Cox pH model. We have our serve object on the left, and now I'm going to include both treatment group and sex in the model on the right-hand side. And I'm going to pass this into table regression, and now all I have to tell table regression is that I want to exponentiate those regression coefficients to get my hazard ratios. It automatically looks at what type of model it is and knows to label the column as a hazard ratio. If you were to pass a logistic regression model in there, on the other hand, it would label that as an odds ratio. So it has some of that default um, behavior that is appropriate to the model. In this case, we get our 
hazard ratio column, 95% confidence interval, and our p-values. And now we see that um, for the treatment group, for example, the levamisol plus 5-FU group has a hazard ratio of 0.6 compared to the placebo group, and that that's a significant difference for the treatment um, comparison. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to get that plot to visualize what the um, survival over time looks like over the entire follow-up period. So we're going to use the GG ServeFit package for this. And the nice thing about the GG ServeFit package, as opposed to the built-in plotting with survival, is that it uses ggplot2 as the basis. So all of the known customizations that are available with ggplot2 are available for um, the plots you make with GG ServeFit using the plus operator. So we can plot Kaplan-Meier curves, we can plot cumulative inc incidence curves using ggqminc, and we can also plot multi-state models using ggservefit. There are options to add confidence intervals, to add risk tables, to add quantiles, and many more options of things that you might want to do with a plot of survival. And I've just linked here again to the website for this package for details and vignettes to get started with it. So we use a um, special servefit function called servefit2 that comes with the GG servefit package to fit our um, Kaplan-Meier curve in this case. And in, we use this instead of the one that's built into the survival package because it just returns the results in a format that is accessible to the plotting functions that we want to use. So we plot, we pass that into our GG servefit, and then from there we use plus operators like we're used to with GG plot 2 to add confidence intervals, add a risk table to the bottom of the plot here showing how many patients are at risk at each time, how many events have occurred at each time. Um, and then we can use some normal ggplot2 functions like scale y continuous, scale x continuous, labs, and other things to customize our plot in the way we want to get out a nice publication-ready plot with as few, you know, a few, just a few lines of code. So then we can put it all together and. On the left here, I'm just showing you know, a tiny, tiny screenshot of a Quarto report with you know, my surfit object with the plot and with my um, probability, five-year recurrence-free probability, some inline text, and below that I have a table of regression coefficients, and we get out our results all ready to go to send to your investigator to copy and paste the tables directly into their report. And so we have this great way of putting it all together using the power of the survival package along with the tables and figures from GT Summary and GG Servfit. So anyone working in survival analysis, I encourage you to check it out. So thank you very much. I've left some contact information here as well as a link to my slides. And before I wrap up, I just want to make a plug that if you love our conferences, the Our Medicine, if you work in medicine, the Our Medicine conference is coming up in just a couple of weeks, June 10th. And if you missed Malcolm and Lucy's workshop from yesterday, they'll be giving it again at this conference. If you loved my talk so much that you want to hear it again, I'll be giving a shorter version of it at this conference. It don't, it's all virtual. It only costs $40 to attend, and there are tons of scholarships available available to go for free as well. So check out the website and consider attending. And here's the promised appendix slide with my example data set code. Thanks.